So a wonderful good day. Welcome to our wonderful great webcast for major trade technologies. And it is today about Inventor, Revit, and Back. So the question is, of course, why Inventor and Revit? Well, um, let's say it this way. Um, there are two big bases which can really walk hand in hand. It's like a marriage between these both. Um, as a picture analogy, and uh, I want to leave it a little bit to you, who is here the husband, who is here the wife. So first, a little bit to me. What I'm doing here at A2K is looking after a lot of the simulation visualization application. And uh, so hence, I'm actually teaching Revit. I'm actually also teaching in Linda. And so um, I was asked basically to prepare here a webcast on how these two uh, can actually be joined. I want to show you a couple of workflows um, because there are some simple workflows and there are some wonderful great workflows um, where we can actually also uh, share some data where we can share some content and um, afterwards I want to give you some best practice tips. Great. So when it comes now to the workflows of uh, Revit and Inventor, you then probably will ask, well, why would we do so? What is the benefit? What is the advantage? And uh, Inventor is commonly being used to create job drawings for the manufacturing, highly detailed job drawing, also communicating with uh, with NC machines and with the fabrication. Revit is being used, on the other hand, uh, to design buildings, to model buildings, following the building information modeling process. And you probably would imagine that a building without mechanical parts as being used, as being designed by inventor, like air conditioning, pumping, electrical parts, and others, that they probably would not work. So I believe that the garbage store or that maybe the plenum or the cooling tower are, for instance, typical geometries, which you probably would more model with Ninja rather than maybe with Revit. Well, actually, Revit is a fantastic great modeling tool. Um, it has its limitations. One of the limitations is that you can't model smaller than one over 32 inch. Well, we don't actually have this issue with Ninja. With Revit, we can deal with hundreds of thousands of objects. Um, if we do this with Ninja, it's getting a little bit tricky. So here we need to distinguish a little bit what do we use which application actually for. So some classical workflows we would have, for instance, where we would find the uh, this workflow is maybe for instance want to convey robots. For instance, we design the fabrication um, straight, we design the warehouse, we design uh, the whole plant may be in Revit, or it flows together in Revit, and we have, for instance, robots, convertibles, any kind of structures, factory designs to share, because they may come traditionally from Inventor. With Revit, when we do the whole life cycle of a building, do, and you want to do some multidiscipline BIM authoring, um, and then, of course, well, we need to know how we actually want to transfer these files from there. Just here, another application being thrown in, for instance, in Nevisworks, where we would then go after. So we go here, have a common waterfall workflow, where we would go from Inventor, Revit, to Nevisworks, for instance, furthermore. Right. Another thing is an engineering workflow. So it might be that we do a classic uh, design in Inventor, we do the plant in Inventor. And uh, the question is then, um, well, does it actually all hold together? Does the, are the connections good enough? Are the connections strong enough? Is the frame strong enough? And here's actually another workflow I want to show you later on for the engineers. Um, is on how do I get actually my assemblies from Inventor actually to Revit, that they become actually also structural members in Revit. They don't become structural members and I share up front already the secret using just common DWG set files and RFA workflows. However, we have here an option. This works via the frame generator and uh, robot structure analysis, which also allows you to design and to certify the design to AS4100. Um, and um, it's a really, really great tool. If you may want to go further to advanced steel, why not? Okay, so and what is the good thing on this? You don't have to remodel anything. Just imagine all the rework you would have going from one package to another package if you cannot share this data streamlined in any way. Great. So 
Then we go from Revit to Inventor, the other way around. I want to show you as one. Well. I have a couple of screenshots here. I might focus a little bit more on screenshots, unfortunately, because when we open some of these uh, models live, then it might take a minute or two. And then the podcast, or basically the webcast, what we do here would be in, uh, would be, uh, would reach its end in just a few, uh, just in a few models. So to get the most out of it, um, I would like yeah, here to, uh, to show you this with a couple of screenshots for that. Okay, great. So we can do here Revit, uh, take off the Revit model to, so to do some BIM authoring to Inventor because we actually want to share the environment. So we can here just share the boundaries that we know how much room we have for the conveyor belt, for the robot, for instance, to act, or we can actually also get multi-body parts actually into Inventor. So let's look into the first, into the first workflow going from Inventor to Revit. Okay, and we want to look into a couple of parts. We want to look into a couple of assemblies, and we want to see how the frames actually behave. Okay, so from Inventor to Revit here. In the first one. So here, very classic and very traditional that you might find anything modeled with in here with uh, with an Inventor, and we find, for instance, that we have here some more modeling tool speed, for instance, that we use in Ambos, that we use maybe also some rip features, or we have some hole and fillet. These are really cool modeling features, which we actually need for this tiny small part here. So we don't want to model everything twice, obviously. Okay. So how do we actually bring, for instance, here, this, um, this geometry now into Revit? Great. So. I have a little bit of an annotation up there. Can we clear our annotation? All drawings, very good. And then chop to make sure it would work a little bit better. So very classic probably, somebody would have thought, okay, I have an Autodesk application and another Autodesk application. Why not exchanging this with a DWG file? Well, DWG is a big container and works fantastic. There's actually also a third big beast on this planet called AutoCAD. And um, so we can also share beautiful designs, 2D or 3D, from AutoCAD to Inventor. All right, good. So um, we can here save just the design as a DWG, and then further on, we can go maybe to the next slide. I have another option that we can sh save this as well as a SAP file. So the question is, what is the story about a SAP file? Um, Revit on its core, this is kind of the structure, it's kind of the skeleton with the meat and the muscles. So this is being working. So this mechanic is working like in a body is an acid set kernel. So this interprets the geometry, stores the geometry a little bit different into a classic DWG file. While also DWG understands that, we have here a very nice clean native file we can actually get out. And Revit uses having a set kernel. So having here the set kernel, uh, would allow us to bring actually a file pretty smooth actually into, into Revit. However, all without intelligence, unfortunately. Great. So you probably have seen when you open up your inventor that you have something like a BIM content tab here on the top. And with this BIM content here on the top, we can actually author our model. So we can actually get it BIM ready in this way. So we can actually add information because info, building information modeling is about information based on the information we model. And we can actually also add on some connectors. We know that these connectors work with the Revit pipes. And so Revit pipes can automatically connect into these connectors, understand this connector, and um, they can be used very simple and easy in the whole, in the whole modeling process then later on in Revit. Okay, so here, for instance, we have a circular shape, we have a square shape, similar like when you do, for instance, here the mechanical, electrical, or plumbing families uh, in Revit. You probably have seen, heard about this. So this is what we can offer here. For instance, we can say it's a cable tray, it's a conway, it's a duct. We have also some electric connectors. In a second, I will show you a few in a, in a minute. Another important part is the UCS. Why? Because Inventor, classically, well, um, has the Y up in the BIM environment in the AC industry, well, we have the set axis up. So this, of course, also needs to be considered in case if you have, uh, well, if you have a, maybe a cooling tower, that it doesn't slip on its side, 
Okay, so that it doesn't lay down or is laying flat. We actually want to have it uh, and we want to bring it in as it's been designed for. Great, so um, we have also here some other options where we can include, for instance, all kinds of model properties. See, for instance, here about the center of gravity, very important for the engineers, structural engineers, and the amount of mass, what material we actually use, and so on, the volume maybe, because here we then can, in case, then export and extract the data and actually also schedule the data. Having this actually, all right? So, okay, and next then, I believe we have here then the option to save this authored here, this authored part within our BIM content environment as an RFA file, as an IFC file, and an ADSK. The ADSK is a very versatile file, comes a little bit from the DWG area, and however, it uh, allows you to work also with Civil 3D, and if you're a plant user, plant 3D, you may know the ADSK file to exchange and share actually uh, data between Inventor maybe and data plants maybe. Okay, so um, I will also show you how these geometries actually come in. And um, I say already up front, forget about this IFC, please. Okay, great. So next is so when you actually export these, um, what Inventor then gives us gives us a little bit of a feedback um, about what it did actually export. We see, for instance, here the example connectors I just did put on my model that they actually have been exported. And for instance, also the amount of faces, just keep this ideally low. And uh, so we get a little bit of a report actually here with it. So you see, also with the time when it was actually exported, when I was preparing here this webcast, um, it shares basically all the information, what it actually did. Great. So other things, what other features do we have actually in Inventor? Why do we want to go from Inventor to Revit? Well, let me, for instance, here into the into the uh, into an uh, um, electronic assembly that we have for instance here some circuit boards we have a couple of capacitors there we have an rs232 for instance here on the side model highly detailed as what we would expect it's not possible actually in Revit to model that detailed because remember it's one of the 32 inch on the other hand the other extent is a radius around the project base point with a radius of 10 miles um, this large assembly of a whole building and 32 by 32 kilometers probably would not necessarily be practical to do this actually in Vendor. So you see here these two different types of applications. And looking for instance here in Vendor, we can here make use of some specific features that we can actually shrink wrap these assemblies. So all these details we actually have, all the inner details of these details we have, they are being eliminated and we just get basically the skin of the assembly because in this case, I believe that the design wouldn't change the much in, anymore. And um, like for instance here, this data box for any uh, data wiring you might use for instance in Revit should be actually enough. So we see for instance here, that we have also for the electrical connector the opportunity to offer these. And we see the green arrow here on the right hand side where I actually did put my connector here in this assembly. All right, okay, so um, let's have a quick look what options we actually have here when it comes to the connectors. We have for instance data, controls, uh, security, nurse alarm, and others, fire alarm and nurse calls, sorry, even balance and unbalance power as we know it from Revit. Okay, so if you're an electrical engineer, you use Inventor already, or maybe also AutoCAD Electrical, um, a wonderful, great tool that you can offer actually your components and bring this actually into Revit. I like when the applications share the data. It's a beautiful communication between applications. Great. So here's one to say example about the YouTube. On the bottom here, we will see here in Inventor the native Y up. And working here with the view group, for instance, located here, my insert point as well, so as it becomes my region, we have actually the Z axis up. So because I probably would put this on a wall. I think so, maybe, could be. Or um, on the side, or we have maybe a cover here and um, somehow eclipse maybe on a turbo. Okay, so um, hence we need to organize here our, our UCS. Great, cool. So let's have a look what next we can do. So here's, for instance, then a classic frame we have used. I've 
pretty model up a tiny frame, be actually happy. And you see on the left hand side um, a couple of 89 by 5 uh, sections just welded and stitched together. And the uh, and when we found this export now the design, we can export it as solid surfaces or just the sketch we actually use here with our frame with our frame generator. And uh, well, I show you how they actually come in. You can see this. So just here to introduce the other example. So let's go to Revit and see what we actually can harvest now. And we have here first of all our RFI file. We bring in into Revit, and when we open up here this RFA file, we see that we have here our classic connector elements, and we have all the parameters available as we had them actually, as we have set them up actually in Inventor. Also, our region actually lines up, and uh, so the part actually comes in. The only thing is that this part, look here in Revit, becomes actually an IPT symbol, um, which is basically encapsulated in its own and does not correspond with the Revit geometry. So it is not on a Revit geometry level with this, where Revit would have to. So you would actually need to finish this off here with work planes and uh, maybe also attach, attach dimensions to it. More about the dimensions and how the dimensions come in in a few, in a few slides. Great. So we have here our IPT symbol. We actually come in, when we actually would explode it, um, there would be nothing left. This depends how the geometry was actually modeled with an inventor. Often it is that we have maybe models coming from SolidWorks, then go to inventor, or we have them from other, from other uh, dubious um, CAD applications, and then we need to stitch this somehow together. Inventor can manage this all very, very well. Um, Robert would be here a little bit picky. So if we just have actually surfaces then, and we want to explode it, it's gone. So don't want to explode it, I want to say. Um, the connector has created a tiny solid for us here that which can be interpreted by Revit and it is a tiny extrusion. So the size of the connector, yes, um, and, and the extrusion started at can be actually set. This was done in Inventor and Revit actually under interprets it. So this is together with the connector where we can actually bring this together. Looking now into the ADS-K file. The ADS-K, remember, was also an option to export this from the BIM content. Gives us actually a tiny boundary, boundary box. This is actually pretty cool. Think of this. You have a BIM execution plan and you have a level of detail, level of information you actually provide. And you actually don't want to model that detailed because it might actually, when you do this on the whole building, it might actually a little bit drag your capacities down. So why not offering then a boundary box with the connectors actually together so that in case if I don't need this high glossy model, that we can actually just work with the boundary box for that. And from there, we can actually do the building information modeling because BIM is more about the data actually rather than the geometry. If this part is being purchased, the guys on site know what it is. They know how it looks like. Okay? Where does it actually being put in? Because it's probably being tagged on a drawing. So we don't need to show actually here um, everything in a high detail. And uh, so hence we can make use here of the boundary box, which comes in from the ADSK file. Good. Also here, um, having a big, a tiny look, the boundary box is uh, a generic model. We see here the shape handles, and hence can be actually also being snatched and stitched to, uh, to connect with red planes and Revit. So we can actually here post audit our parameter. This is good because in case to make it a bit flexible, we then can revert and convert the or bring the information back into a and say, hey please model this a little bit larger. We need to have this a little bit larger or a bit longer here in this area um, that it would fit my Revit design. And we don't have to remodel anything. So here's the worst example. You see what I see? A crazy mesh form. And this is coming from guests that I've seen. So forget about I've seen. Um, 
it clutters everything basically up here and uh and um it's not so nice it doesn't look that round if you ask me and um yeah well would actually just drag the whole resources down okay let's forget about ifc just to show that's an option ifc might be really good if you have some square environments be it for instance some walls or others if you have something curved no you look into some into some other design. So here, for instance, a tiny example, if we just bring in natively the DWG. Before it was the BIM content model, here is now the DWG model. And we wanna a little bit see how the geometry comes in compared to our intelligent geometry it just put in with all the connectors and all uh, the information coming actually in. So here, yeah, first, when we try to ex when we try to explode this geometry because we want to work with it, it's not possible because my uh, my bend uh, is uh, yeah well just consists out of surfaces and hence I have a little bit of an issue here with my geometry can't be exploded and uh, yeah can't work actually with it. Here, for instance, a very nice clean model coming in. That is our set export. We see here especially with the in the geometry that is very nice and clean, very nice defined and kernel true and kernel uh, efficient how the geometry has been exported in a set file. If you have, for instance, larger concrete uh, bins, uh, be it, for instance, for uh, the freshwater supply for a city or a town, we can actually also continue to design actually here our reinforcing and add actually some reinforcing cover actually on. Great, so what do we have here as the next? Well, here's our assembly. Do you remember the assembly we just had before? Yes. So this came also in here with as an RFA file. And how do we know? Because we see actually our connectors coming in. We see here the solid of the connector coming in where the pipe comes to. This would be here the data pipe. For instance, could be the data, the data line. You could have actually also added on maybe a conduit connection, and then um, it would automatically recognize then the diameter and so on. So, but here's the, the data wire it connects to, and then we have here all our shape handlers. Can be of course a bit messy because remember when we have here the processor of our board that um, while well, we have a lot of tiny surfaces, and this can of course mess a little bit. So consider uh, maybe to simplify your model, which can be simplified in Inventor. And then we have um, a simple model actually in Revit with less shape handlers. Looks like a little bit better. Okay, great. So um, here, the classic DWG input. If you now compare, for instance, how this model actually came in from an RFA, again, to the DWG, you might notice it is actually the same representation. So there's a bit of a DWG running in the back end, possibly, um, sharing these, uh, sharing here the data and the information. And we can actually, for instance, some of the exile, if, you, if it has been modeled uh, solid, we can actually also um, explode it and can actually work with these shape handlers. But we see that with the DWG, we don't get actually our connector. Ask yourself if you want to finish the authoring in Revit, if you have it available, or if you have to do it in Inventor. Let's have a quick look into our set file. Also here, we see especially around the capacitor that the geometry is actually nice and clean and we are actually kind of real, kind of close with our geometry and uh, it actually works very nice and efficient. Also when we have very complex shapes. So a set file is probably the better import into, into Revit, I would say. Um, and then of course you have here um, the generic model available. Good, here's one with our frame now. Remember the frame we have introduced before and when we now bring the frame in as a DWG, it doesn't recognize the section sizes. It just gets its shape handlers. But again, um, we have another solution that we want to demonstrate. And when we go, for instance, now here to our set, also here, some of the set is kind of close to Revit. Um, it brings nice geometry in, um, it doesn't bring in the section. It's just printed it as a mass object with volume, not with 30 section. Great, so um, how do we bring in the section into Revit? It's then a big question. We have here, for instance, in from going from Inventor to Revit, our frame analysis tool. 
If you want to find more about the firm analysis, join us in one of our FEA sessions. And what we can just easily do, do a tiny static analysis, work out a little bit the bending moment, and so on, and double check if this actually works. Here, for instance, an example setup of, uh, of an analysis, just a little bit testing it up against gravity. This analysis then can be sent off to robot for further investigations or also for section sizes and section optimization, what robot can actually do, following AS4100. And here's, for instance, our nice frame in robot. Here we see on the left-hand side actually our sections. We see actually also any type of material, any kind of releases, anything what the what the structure engineers had dreams of is available. Okay, so we have here then our frame. And then of course we can bring it in then into Revit. So it's easy by just actually sending the model to Revit. So it can be also being sent via an SMX file, and then we could uh, yeah, just open up or basically import the SMX file and we would have our sections then in Revit available. So now you see when we have these sections in Revit, it's actually just a tiny export again for our final authoring of the structure um, and uh, bring it then into advanced view for any shop drawings. You see how cool it is that you actually don't need to do the shop drawings of a big frame in Inventor. You can actually do this with an advanced scale. And this of course helps the time and the budget. So we see here also our analytical lines and all the other features, including our trying cut backs, including actually also our zip justifications, some of the other applications actually might not have. So great. So I was just mentioning before that we also want to look into some of the parameters. I have just a simple 101 box here, my, like you might know from an Inventor 101 training. So when you have here, in our project parameter, the export parameter, tick box set, then actually these parameters are being exported as well. So you remember here, through, through the petition we learn, we remember here that in our building of the, in our, in our author building components dialog, you know, that we, where we can set our a few cubes where we can set basically the orientation and any other mass properties that here these parameters are available. Great. So um, next is, so when we have them available, let's see how it would work when we, for instance, go back to our pipe. So here, for instance, the band from our pipe also has its parameters, works also imperial, and even the formulas do actually come through actually as well. So these are similar to formulas we actually have or had in Inventor, including actually also here our connections, as you see. The only difference is that because it actually comes in as a part, these parameters are not associated in any way to any reference planes or to the geometry. So there is no option. So you would need to take it and post author it, but you have the data actually there. So consider it theoretically designed. You shouldn't finish off the design in Revit, stay in the native application where it has been designed. Also here for our assembly works the same, that we can actually here bring the dimensions in and the, uh, the connectors are obviously also shown here, but again, it is not connected. And so this works pretty well. So if you have this information and you want to share it about the dimension of what the size is, and you have it already in your design, share it. Okay, great. So let's go the other way. Let's go a little bit from Revit to in Inventor. Let's go a little bit the other way and see what we can do. So here, as an example, I have just taken our big, 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 big school, the MEP model from our school, and I have added on here a little bit of a room where we can deal and a little bit track here our banner. Great, so having here our model, we can export this also as a set file, but more to this later. So here, if I actually have a Revit file, a Revit inventor can actually read in the Revit files natively. 
And um, it would ask me then to select the view I want to import, the 3D view. And then we have here our single composite feature or our multi-body part. You see here on the bottom, uh, we can then choose from. We focus first on the single composite feature because this brings in the whole model just as an environment. Why would I want to use this? Because I want to use this as an off-print. Give me two slides and I can actually show you this. All right? Good. So here, for instance, when you bring in this as a composite feature, we have here just our surfaces as our environment. And then we can actually start here taking this and start actually modeling. All right. So here I can make use of all the inventor features to actually to model actually our geometry. And yeah, well, this is actually pretty cool because you are here close, you probably can produce immediately your, uh, your shop drawings from the production drawings, can do all kinds of FEA analysis and other designs coming actually from Inventor and, and um, it's actually a good environment to continue this year. Okay, later on, I can just take, for instance, here this assembly and then bring it actually back into Revit and it would fit, obviously. So next, when you do, for instance, here a set export from Revit and want to bring the set form actually into Inventor. It actually understands it. So I believe that there's a bit of a sad exchange running in the back end between Revit and Inventor. A tiny other dialog I want to show you here squeezes itself in and asks if you want to have this as assembly or body part or composite features. And so when you do actually the assembly feature, we actually also end up with our boundaries and then uh, our surfaces in Inventor and start continuing to model. It's the same thing as what I've just shown before and which would then allow me to model and design my, uh, my conveyor belt, my robot and others to suit, for instance, here, um, the boundary conditions. Good, so here's an example of bringing in the Revit file or the set file as a multi-body part. You see, for instance, here on the left-hand side, in our letter, the huge list from ES from each solid here. So each, Geometry became a solid, and we have the list available. We see the GUI from Revit actually um, here available. And if there is something we need, well, we can harvest, we can snatch it. Because you may have some Revit families about planums, about uh, cooling towers already, and we may, may need to add maybe a flange, we need to add maybe another connection to it. And uh, so we can actually here make use of the geometry. But remember, it's probably unlikely that you use Inventor to model a building, and it's highly unlikely that you use Revit to create shop drawings um, for a flange. Is it possible? Sure, of course. Is it practical? Possibly not. So hence, we need to distinguish um, what we actually share, which data we actually share to make here this, uh, yeah, to make here that that's not possible. Great. So let's see a little bit further what we actually have. Then we actually want to exchange our design in a classic DWG because AutoCAD and Inventor, they are very good friends. So why not considering to actually export the whole model as a DWG? In the DWG export in Revit, you might know, you might remember that we have here the option to use a poly mesh or also use acid solids. Obviously, we want to use acid solids for that because we want to have some real geometry. Um, a poly mesh or a big mesh, probably we would end up with something like an RFC again, like what we have seen before, we actually don't want. So why not using an SS file in our DWG uh, mantle? And well, we then can actually bring this DWG file into in render. Good, but you probably hear my voice that I'm going a little bit down because I was canceling this after 24 hours. So it was nearly impossible to get here the whole design. So please consider the geometry you want to export and you want to bring in using a DWG workflow. Don't here make the mistake. Use please a native Revit file, use a set file, please. Um, Inventor is also a wonderful great parametric solid modeler, works with IGES files, set files, CWGs, and others. The problem is here is 
that we just have too much information with the DWG because it literally stores anything and everything. In. And that's just a little bit too much for our inventory to process. As I just talked before, you probably wouldn't use Inventor to model a building. Again, so because it's a lot of components for that. <clears throat> Great. So what are the conclusions? What are the lessons learned? What we just did actually run through. Just here a couple of final slides before we open it up to answer some questions. And so here, for instance, a tiny reach. If you, for instance, move data from Inventor to Revit, that's probably a most likely word from what I should experience. However, if we do so, assets should be considered as being designed. So we don't want to have, we don't need to rely on reviewing the design. Um, so in case, if it is so, please consider to go from Revit to Inventor first and maybe use a composite file to actually to share, for instance here, the environment, the boundaries, that the part actually would fit. Can I touch it up a little bit in Revit? As we have seen before, yes, we can. Good. Um, alternative, we can use a set or DWG, and it works well. We have seen before, avoid RFCs, please. And also, uh, in general, share your Revit file. It works very well. Okay. Um, I don't know why you want to use these text-based RFCs. Um, yeah. You probably wouldn't print it and read it. Everybody would just fall asleep. Great. So um, remember that the parameter can be exported, but it requires a final authoring in Revit with the dimensions, like what we have seen before. And this is, of course, uh, can be a little bit tricky. It can be a little, ask for a little bit of a rework. In case, if I have to have it, flexible, if you have to have it, parametric. Moving, for instance, the design from Revit to Inventor, it has one to to, uh, to set up the environment, to uh, um, that we can actually model our robot arms or conveyor belts and others and or design a plenum or cooling tower or whatever is required. So we use it a little bit as an off print within an inventor to get the proportions actually right. Okay, so in modeling an in inventor, please prefer a little bit of a solid modeling over surfaces so that in Revit you can actually use your assets set solid kernel in your assets set solid files actually with it. And um, then we get actually a nice, cool, clean, clean geometry. So I'm open for some questions. Let's see if we have some questions here. And if we just have two participants. So in case not, in case you have any questions, just please uh, get back to us by email. Otherwise, I wish you a wonderful, great rest of the week. And hope you enjoyed the webcast and uh, make an efficient use of it. Thank you.